CSS is a powerful page description language that unleashes the power of your creativity. And it adds some potent new features that can do incredible things with a few short lines of code. One of those features is the animation feature, and it doesn't stop with moving objects on the web page. In fact, you can modify all sorts of element properties using this new capability. So in this video, I'll discuss some advanced animation techniques using CSS3. Now here I've got a div container, it's called Move Me, and we've got our animations already set up for the various browsers, and some keyframes, but they're empty right now. So let's start by maybe creating a from and to animation. We're going to start by rotating this, rotate, and we'll start that at zero degrees because it's the first keyframe. And rather than just leave it there, we're going to also do the uh, X position, which is left zero pixels. And we'll also do top zero pixels. So that's the starting point for our object. Now I'll pull that back up there and I'll copy that entire thing and then paste it in down here because we want to create our two positions. So think of uh, from and to as uh, 0% and 100%. And here we'll rotate, say, 360 degrees. And we'll have the left position at 300 and the top position at 300. And so let's copy this entire thing. Make sure that we put it in here to capture all the different browsers that might be loading this page. Save it and refresh the page. Now, rather than just have it move from left to right or top to bottom, now we've got it rotating on, uh, on its own axis and then moving along two different axes, the X and Y axis. So that's great, you can do that, but you can do much more than just that. Let's take another look. Rather than just do from and to, I'm gonna use percentages now. So I'll set our different keyframes and we'll set multiple keyframes. I'll make one 0% and one 100%. And that's effectively the same thing as doing from and to, but now that we're using percentages, we can copy that, control C or right click, paste it with control V, and I can put in another value here and transform and maybe I'll have this uh, running at 45 degrees. Uh, well, no, make it, uh, we want to make it something irregular to make it sort of obvious what we're doing here. So 90 degrees for that. We'll make the left value 150. And we'll make that top value, again, something irregular, okay? Because if we just made a transition from 0, 150, 300, 0, 150, 300, we wouldn't really see a change. But now we're changing that value to 100, and we're changing this value to 90 degrees. We should see a drastic change here. I'll go ahead and copy that and make sure that we put it in there. And here save it and refresh the page. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit of a different look. You can see that it's sort of moving off and then down at a different level. So we can start to really have some fun with this. If I copy this line again and put it in here and make this 75%, what if we were to bring it back up to 100 and maybe move the Y value down to 200 here? copy that. Remember to paste it in the other two keyframe sets that cover all the different browser types. Save that and refresh. Okay, now you can see we moved it off and uh, it's, it's actually taking on a life of its own. And you can do some other things as well. So for instance, if I wanted to change the background color and have that cycle, okay, I could do this background color and I'll make that that orangish color. And uh, down here, I'm going to have the background color. And you don't have to add it to every single keyframe, by the way, or location. You can just have it wherever you want to put it and get different effects. And save that. And again, just have to go through this step of pasting it into the various keyframes. And save. 
that now not only are we moving it, but we're also cycling the colors and getting some really interesting effects. So you can do all sorts of neat things using the animation property in CSS3. And just remember that you have to take advantage or have to take accounting, rather, of the fact that different browsers use a different type of notation. So you want to make sure that you cover that. And really, you can play around in all sorts of ways. I could even do something like this. Let's go width. We're going to change the width and height now. So we'll make the width 50 pixels and the height uh, 150 pixels. And then uh, down in the last one, we'll make the width, we'll, make, we'll reset it back to its original 100 pixels uh, and height 100 pixels like that. Copy the entire thing. Um, okay, make sure we grab it. Okay, there we go. That looks good. And right here, paste it in, save it. And now we should see something totally different. Okay, there you go. So you can really play around with the animation properties. Try them out, play around, choose some different uh, uh, properties inside those, uh, those CSS styles, inside the keyframes, and you can come up with pretty much anything.